Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of Cities Skylines. This is a uh, my first tutorial. Um, if you watched my first episode in the second season, you'll see that I actually created a new map using a tool set uh, from terrainparty.com, or actually, I'm sorry, terrain.party, as it were. And uh, as I got further into playing with it. I realized that it, uh, there was actually some really interesting tools in being able to create your own uh, maps from scratch. Um, I, in the past, I've done some fantasy cartography and creating maps uh, for various other role-playing games, things like that. And so I learned a lot of techniques in Photoshop to create that type of uh, topography. And uh, as a result, I started playing with it the other day and realized it's really actually quite easy to create your own maps. You don't actually have to use Terrain Party if you don't want to, it's, although it's kind of cool because you can go pick uh, various areas of the world to do it. Um, but otherwise, it's kind of cool to be able to create your own. Uh, and so this is an example of one that I created actually in probably, oh, the map itself only took about 10 minutes or so, um, you know, coming in and laying in uh, examples of the railroads and highways and things like that took a lot longer and putting all the trees and stuff like that in. But uh, the topography and the landforms actually didn't take very long at all, maybe a little more than 10 minutes. Um, and I'm going to take a little bit more time in the tutorial to show you how to do it well. I'm thinking I might be doing this in two episodes um, because it takes it takes a while to kind of do all the pieces. If I'm just you know cruising through the workflow, it doesn't take very long. But to slow down and show you guys uh, all the steps takes a little bit longer. So um, yeah, as an example, like I said, this is an example of one of them that I did and. So what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to step out of Cities at Skylines and go into Photoshop and start showing you the tool sets in there. And uh, I actually created a base file that I'm going to be happy to share. I'll put it in the uh, description for the video and you can download it. I don't know where I'm going to put it or where I'm going to host it yet, but we'll figure that out before I uh, actually post this online. So uh, check down in the description and hopefully there is a link in there. If not, then... Um, I'll tell you why there isn't, but hopefully there will be. So let's go into Photoshop. All right, in Photoshop, you can see we've got our base file open. It's Cities Skylines Map Template PSD. And uh, within this file, I created uh, a set of grid lines that represent the game tiles. And so we've got our 3x3 three three, uh, standard 9-tile grid in the center. And so our starting one is typically going to be in here. And when you're in the map editor, you can move that around. But just to give you an idea, that center tile is where you typically start. And then we have our extended 5x5 five five grid tiles that you could unlock uh, using some mods. And then there's even a mod that unlocks the full 81 9x9 nine nine grid. Uh, and then this is 1,081 pixels by 1,081 pixels and represents the uh, the full map that is available currently in City Skylines. So um, I thought that'd be really useful in terms of when you're creating your map to be able to know where you are within uh, that grid. And so you can kind of focus on that that inner 9x9 nine nine, knowing that that's going to be where you start and spend most of your time and then your full extended grid if you decide to use those mods. So and then um, within that group I did include a white background that you can turn off and on and see transparent below it. And as a quick example, that means you can see, um, you know, if you're creating your map, you can leave your tie, your your grid on over it and be able to see what's what you're doing within that. And uh, I'll show you these examples in just a minute. And then also within the template, you've got, you've got your mountain layers, your ground layers, and your ocean layers. And for this first tutorial, we're going to focus on just introducing you to the map itself. Uh, we're going to go ahead and complete the ocean layers, and then that'll be the end of this episode. And then the next episode or next uh, tutorial, uh, part two, we'll go into the ground layers, the mountain layers, and then getting it imported into uh, the game. So uh, what I did want to do is I want to show you this really quick. This is a test plate that I've created, and I'm going to go ahead and open this up in the game just so you can see what's going on. And uh, what this represents is, what I wanted to do is create this template of grayscale values and get a really good solid handle on what um, grayscale value translates into an elevation within the game. And luckily, I think it actually is really clear and pretty easy to understand. And so what we see here is, I'll show you this really quick in the color picker. Um, you have 
uh, of course your color picker here that, you, that you've opened up and you're trying to choose your color and the one I, I want to show you in particular is this grayscale value or the, the HSB value, this B value right here represents um, if you have your H and your S at zero is basically perfect black and white on the grayscale spectrum over here and so white has a value of 100 and within the game, and I'll, I'll show you this again in just a minute uh, the elevations are 0 to 1000 so if you add a 0 and then that essentially perfect 100% white represents uh, the 1000 foot elevation or 1000 meter elevation and a perfect value of 0 which is perfect black represents the uh, lowest elevation you can go in the map so it makes it pretty easy because if you want to say have something at exactly 200 meters in elevation you can go to 20 on your B value there and know that that color that color of gray represents exactly 200 uh, meters in the game and so you can uh, for instance the ocean itself, and I'll show this again in the map, is at 4, um, so a grayscale value of 4 would be the same as the ocean elevation in the game uh, as it um, defaults, I guess, would be the word I'm looking for. And so if you didn't know that you wanted to have all of your land mass exactly one meter above that, you could set a grayscale value to 5 and paint everything that version of gray, knowing that it'll be one meter above the default elevation so um, there you go I think just to show you these really quick uh, that's z a perfect zero black perfect 100 white this is a great gradient from uh, perfect black to perfect white and then we've got um, a zero black 20 percent gray 40 percent gray 60 and 80 and then over here the same thing this is a 20 percent gray 40 60 80 uh, with a 100 white and then these are just different types of gradients or radial gradient uh, um, and I wanted to put some values of black against white to see uh, what that does and it does it leads to a perfectly vertical uh, wall essentially from um, you know, a thousand meter <laughs> high wall from uh, that zero black to 100 white so uh, let's open this up in game and you can see uh, exactly what effect these colors have on it and then when we start getting into painting the ocean layers this will help you give you a really good idea of what those values are going to represent when we get them into the game so uh, let's go into cities really quick all right now you just want to go to tools uh, you want to select the map editor which is the same thing uh, you'll do when we actually get our map finished uh, we'll create a new map and since this is our uh, test plate it doesn't really matter which map we use we'll just start with temperate that makes it easy and uh, again, just to make sure uh, we understand, uh, black is the zero elevation and white is 1,000. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with meters. I've been kind of going back and forth. So let's call it meters for now. And uh, so when we get in here and we lay this test in, you'll see really what it looks like. So we go into import and we've got our test map. We've got a couple other maps I've been uh, goofing with in here. So let's import this bad boy and you can see <laughs> how goofy it looks. Um, close our import window. And uh, yeah, let's zoom out a little bit. And so again, this uh, this area is that white 1,000 elevation and black elevation of zero down here. Let's get in there. Oh, there we go. And again, we, we, we mentioned that the ocean was at elevation 40, which, and translating that back to a color, that's a, a grayscale of four. And we can test that by just looking at ocean you can see it's at elevation 40 which again is 4 and if we set that to 0 uh, it should just disappear and there it goes and another good way to test that is to remember that you know we I don't want to set it at a thousand but one of these other ones so we had this black band at the top that was 0 and then stepping these up we got 20 40 60 80 and then this is 100 um, and again, that's, I'm not adding zeros to it, those are just the values, and so at actual elevation, this is zero elevation, 200, 400, 600, 800, and 1,000. And so what we can do is we can go into our ocean layer real quick, and I think I can type it in. Let's say if we went to 199 at sea level, that should set us just below, one meter below that 200. And there you go. And so that gives you kind of an idea of what it looks like. So that's that uh, that that 20 grayscale value, uh, or which translates into 200 in the game. And so I'm curious, what if I did exactly 200 in here? 
What would that look like? Would that actually float over it or be right up to the bottom of it? Looks like it's going to keep it there. Let's see what happens. Just This is just out of curiosity here. Let's go to 201. And see if that does anything. Interesting. So it's sticking it below for some reason. I'm not sure why exactly. Am I not changing it? Maybe that's too fine grain for it. Maybe it needs to do it in like fives. What if we did 205? Yeah, there we go. So then it, that should... You can see it rose, it raised up a little bit. Rose, rose, raised, rose, risen. <laughs> but that came up just below. That's interesting. Um, so maybe it's not quite as fine grained as I thought, because you know that should be that twenty, uh, the the yeah the twenty grayscale value. And it's interesting. It's kind of showing up over here a little bit. Let's go over here and look. Well, over here it's flooding it. This is interesting. Um, but it's not on that value. Huh, maybe it's just the, the game acting a little bit funky, because there you go. See, that's that was covering all that up for a second there, and now it's not, depending on kind of where I am. So anyway, it looks like it's it's working. It's uh, relatively fine-grained. It might take a little bit of time. Maybe if I crank up the time speed, it'll eventually figure it out. But, um, but yeah, there you go. So that's uh, more or less how you can kind of fine-tune things using colors, or uh, I'm sorry, grayscale values within Photoshop. And you know, here's another example of it over here. This was that uh, radi radial gradient. Uh, we had zero in the center, or I'm sorry, 100 white in the center and zero black at the edges. And you can see that is a vertical, pretty much a sheer vertical cliff in there. And same thing here. We had that black right against the white, and it's uh, straight up and down. So if you want to create really shallow slopes, you need to have a really smooth gradient within a really narrow band of grayscale volume, uh, colors. So, uh, yeah, there you go. I think that gives us a good example. Let's head back into uh, Photoshop and we'll get started on our creating our ocean base and our land masses. All right, back into Photoshop. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off. The test plate and I'll show you this as well this is an example of one of the what a map could look like uh, at the end of today's first uh, lesson uh, on the ocean layers and that is we want to have a map that shows the basically the landforms and the ocean and, uh, and water I should uh, maybe it's not just ocean but it's actually the water layer and for this particular example I actually wanted an ocean along one edge something at that scale and maybe something like along the lakes as part of it and then a river that comes up and touches that first tile because you need to have water in the first tile for it to actually work because you need to of course uh, tie into it and you need water flow going in a particular direction so that you can put uh, water pumps on one side and your sewage on the other and things like that um, and as we start developing our base we want to think a little bit about gameplay so we'll also need to if we're using this as an example we probably need to put a river or something in that had a higher flow on it that might be outside of that first tile it could be in the first tile if we wanted it to be uh, but you might want to have it in one of the exterior tiles and the idea being that as you progress in the game and you need to have that dam then you can buy the tile or a tile that has that water source in it that you could you tie your dam across and add energy or more power to the grid that you need and uh, thinking a little bit more about actually even the extended gameplay for people who are into the mods and want to uh, uh, do the full 25 tiles or 81 tiles, we can add more interesting gameplay beyond the boundaries. And so, for example, this one, maybe we actually had a large waterfall or something like that that created a really high flow uh, out here along the edges of this 25 game or the 25 tile grid. Uh, the idea being that if you if you extended a big dam across that and you had lots of money and you were able to afford that, you'd be able to get generate a lot of power and create some interesting things by damming that up and what that might do upstream. So um, just think a little bit about that as you develop your own map. And that's what we'll try to do here. So let's go ahead and turn this off. We'll turn our grid off for right now. We're going to step into the ocean layers. And you know, this could be water layers, whatever you want to call it. I just called it that because that's kind of what we're doing. And uh, let's go first into just getting the, the base started. So what you want to do is click on the clouds layer or create your own clouds layer if you're doing your own from scratch. And then go in and do a clouds. There's two different kinds you can do. You can do clouds and difference clouds. They do essentially the same thing. It's just that difference clouds you need to actually have 
like a, a 50 percent uh, neutral gray background has to be filled in but since we're not doing that here we can do that on there and because I've got this threshold turned on let me turn that off and this I'll show you exactly what this is this is what it would look like when you did clouds on an empty layer and if you don't like the way it looks you can just hit control F and that you can just kind of keep changing it just keeps refilling it in and until you get something that you like a little bit more I like leaving the threshold on and just so you know real quickly right now I have the threshold level set right at the dead center it's 0 to 255 is where you can fit within that slider range and I have mine set right in the middle for right now as a starting point point. and what I'm looking for on this clouds layer I'll keep hitting control F until I find a shape that I kind of like and like this is maybe a little heavy on the black and maybe I want a little bit more white a little more land mass and so I can kind of play with that slider and decrease the threshold I found that 110 actually works pretty good at this point or right around there uh, because it's got more of that white land mass and then you can, if you want to you can kind of go back onto your clouds layer and hit control F a couple more times until you start seeing some shapes that you like that kind of speak to you a little bit I'm not seeing anything just yet you know there's an interesting kind of water source in there that's probably cutting a little bit too th through the middle uh, we can also turn our grid lines back on oh and by the way if you I don't remember if I showed this or not, but make sure you can click that white background off so that you can see the grid over what you're doing. So you can see water coming through that central first tile. You know, here this you know, this one's speaking to me a little bit. This is kind of interesting. Because we've got a little bit touching that tile, and we've got some areas here that we can fill in, but we've got this interesting sort of these water shapes in here. Let's, let's, let's use this one just for fun. All right, so now we've got that, and if you want to just tweak the thresholds a little bit, you can do that at this point. You can kind of, you know, try and you know, maybe we'll increase that a little bit. Create this these kind of tight channels coming in, and uh, maybe this is maybe this is a river that's coming off of. Uh, that's what I'll do. I think I'm going to cut this edge and make this more of an ocean edge, and then this might be like a bay that comes in, and this could be a river that's coming from upstream, and we'll fill some of this in and maybe tie the edges together and you want to have some larger land masses when it's all said and done so that you can start getting some mountainous elevations and things like that uh, so yeah I think I'm gonna leave mine about 98 and then we're gonna go into this paint layer and before you get going too far into that go ahead and hit D and that's gonna reset your um, your colors over here your foreground background color and so we're going to start painting in with the ocean first and so if, if you want to swap these back and forth so that you have foreground and background you can X and you can see that changes it back and forth and then D just resets it back to black uh, as being the foreground so uh, but that's fine for right now let's uh, go into our brush layer which is B and pick a solid color um, you know 60 is about a good size the other thing you can do too is the brackets next to your P uh, if you hit brackets up and down that changes the size of your brush so you don't have to actually hit this up here um, and then let's turn the opacity for at this point the opacity will actually is gonna make a big difference in this particular case in terms of how it paints the edges but I'm gonna set it to 100 right now because really I just want to block out some big things and so let's go ahead and make sure you're on the paint layer don't do it on the clouds layer you want to be on the paint layer and eventually I'll show you why and so you just kinda block in the shoreline a little bit knowing that I'm gonna come back and refine this edge at some point but for right now that's okay um, I think that's all I'm really going to do along that edge for right now. Then I'm going to hit X to change it to white. And then I'm going to start painting in my land masses a little bit more. I think I might bring this back in just a little bit. And start covering in some of these lakes. I don't need this many lakes on here. I don't think I like this one right in the middle of my map. We're going to have to bring the shore down in here a little bit so it touches our uh, starting point, but that's okay. Uh, I think I'll leave th that one... Well, I think I'm going to cover some of these in because I'm going to want to be able to get some mountains in here. And this is off the edge, so I really don't care too much about that one. I'm going to leave that one in. Um, take this one out. Take these guys out right there. And that should work pretty well. Let's hit X again, and I'm going to take out some of this. Make it a little bit bigger. So we're touching our starting tile with some water. I think the other thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go back to white. I'm going to make this actually a river because I want to be able to exploit that later on for a water source. And I'm going to make my brush just a little bit smaller and we're going to extend it 
you know, kind of back up and through here somewhere, and we'll do something else with that. And so again, this is just really roughing out the edges. This isn't what it's going to look like. Um, and then we're going to get this and paint that in, fill in some of these little bits. You want to make sure, and you don't want to have too many of these small um, little islands and things like that out there. Some of them are okay because it adds definitely some character to the game, but uh, that also, if you get too many of them, that kind of creates some other problems. So I'll leave some islands out in here. That's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. You get rid of that little guy right there, that little guy right there. All right. Now we want to start refining our edge a little bit. And this is where the opacity makes a difference. So go ahead and crank that down to about 25 or so. Because what it's doing is the threshold is actually reaching, it's reading the gray scales of the clouds and the paint layer together. And so it's picking a midpoint that's based on this one. And so it's um, at 98. So this this maybe this is equivalent to roughly a 40 or a 45 on the grayscale. And what it's doing is it's taking everything above 45 and making it white and everything below and making it black. And so when we go to a 20 opacity grayscale, we're actually painting in a uh, a gray that's right in that range. It's right in that 45 range. And what we're doing is, but with opacity, is we're very subtly layering, layering on um, either black or white to change the grayscale and it really will make the edges a lot more interesting. So uh, let's go ahead and leave it. I, you know, I think I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to a, I got to make sure I'm on the paint layer, a, um, what do you call these? It's a less hardness brush, so it's a softer brush. And let's see if this will help. Let's increase our size a little bit. Let's change it over to black. And we start painting along these edges. And We'll start seeing here in a second, actually. Let's turn it back to gray. Let's change our brush to something a little bit rougher and see if this helps. There we go. Start adding in some more interesting uh, topography along the edges. There you go. Uh, that white. Let's come along in through here. I'm going to sort of fill this back in just a little bit just to create a more interesting edge and then I'll go back with uh, that black again and we'll narrow the brush up just a little bit and there we go so you can see what we're trying to do is just create a more interesting edge and using the uh, the limitations of the brushes and things like that to be able to make that a more interesting shape Let me just kind of continue that along in through here. I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit. It's a little bit rough, but it's not too bad. And we also want to make sure that we have kind of some pinch points that we can get bridges across. We don't want to make it too difficult to be able to get across with our own bridges. So there you go. That's That kind of creates an interesting little edge there. I think I'm going to go back to a regular brush for right now and see if that I can clean this edge up just a little bit more than that. There we go. Yeah, that's better. That's kind of cool. We got these little islands in the middle of it, right in through there. There we go. That's created a lot more interesting shape. Make our black just a little bit lower. See if, see if I can get this edge. That edge is being a little bit difficult right there. There we go. So you just kind of using that X, I keep switching back and forth between black and white, trying to uh, make that edge a little more interesting. And it seems to be working a little bit, so let's clean up this just a little bit. We want to get down into here. There we go. We got the water. Let me try to get a little bit more. This might be a little bit of a challenge to get water actually flowing in one particular direction. So what we'll have to probably end up having to do is put a water source uh, back in in here somewhere to get water flowing that way, so that we can make sure and have uh, the pump and the, and the sewage going in the right direction. So there we go. I think we're getting a little bit closer. Let's go ahead and do uh, the shore up here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, there we go. Just go back again, doing kind of X back and forth, trying to uh, get it to create some interesting edges and shapes. Anything you do, you can change, you know, subtly change the opacity too. That, that actually helps sort of refine that, that edge a little bit. There you go.
And uh, again, you can also change the brushes, trying to find a better mix in here somewhere. There we go. That's better. Got some of that up in there. Got some of this up in here. Let's expand this over just a little bit. This little bay that's coming in. I like this lake. Uh, we'll be able to have some kind of you know mountains around the edges of it. Maybe this is a really wide delta. We can get a lot of um, farmland and things like along this river. That might be kind of interesting. Oop, I don't think I want to do that. There we go. Alright, um, I think that gives us a real good basic shape and uh, you know we've got uh, an ocean along on one side. We got a bay that might be interesting to build around. We could, uh, if we want to spend an expensive bridge or do something, we can actually bring something out and connect to a peninsula. Uh, there's lots of interesting opportunities. You can connect over here. If you had the full 81 grid, you could actually connect over here and start developing on this side. Might be kind of cool. So we, we've achieved some measure of gameplay, which I think is exactly what we wanted to do. And uh, now. There's a couple of things we need to do to prep this and get it ready for moving into the ground layers and mountain layers. And the first thing we need to do is make sure your grid's turned off. This is what you want to be able to see. Uh, make sure your clouds are turned on. And then you hit Control A to select everything. And then you go up to Edit. Or if you already know this, you want to do Copy Merged, which is Shift Control C. So you've got basically what this does is just copied all the layers that you're seeing within there as a merged file. Now we want to go into Channels, and I've already got alpha one here I shouldn't I had forgot to delete that but uh, so you want to add a new alpha layer which will be black like this and you've already done your copy merge just hit control V or if you need to you can also hit paste up into here and now paste that into that alpha channel and you go back into your layers and you can go ahead and start turning some of the stuff off and you're like well why is it still on there because your alpha layer is on so you can go ahead and click your RGB back on, turn your alpha off for a second. And then you want to go into shoreline and make sure that's turned on. So you're not going to see anything. Hit Control D to deselect it. That way your little marching ants turn off. And then you want to go into select, load selection, and under channel you want to do alpha 1. And so what that's going to do now is it's going to load. You can see the, the shoreline that's in there. It basically it, it selected all the white area that was in there. And now you want to make sure that over here on the left hand side that you are, uh, you've got white as your foreground layer. It can still be your background layer, but if it's your foreground layer, then what you want to do is you want to hit Alt Backspace and it fills in that area with a white. If you've got a, a white as your background, you could hit Control Backspace and it'll fill it in just as easily. And then Control D to deselect it. And now you can actually delete your threshold layer, you can delete your paint layer. You can turn your clouds on, and there you go. That basically, it, you're seeing exactly what we had shown on our example layer down here. And this is about where we need to complete our ocean layers. And we're going to be adjusting the clouds layers and things like that to reduce. Uh, that's the reason the black background here is actually. I'll just show you this really quick. So you can do this if you want to. You want to grab that clouds layer and set it behind the black background. And then you turn it on. Now you've got that pure black and white. And uh, you, now you can, oops, I don't want to adjust that one. I want to adjust the black background. And what we're trying to do is let some of that gray come through off the clouds layer just a little bit so that we don't have a perfectly flat bottom. We don't really need that. Um, and we'll adjust this over time. We'll move it up and down as we start uh, looking at what our, grace, what, what our values are uh, and things like that. So now I could, if I wanted to, I could do... I is my little picker in here, and this is going to change the color there. Like I'm curious what this gray layer is right there, so I can click on that, and then click on here, and that'll show me I'm at 18. So that you know, translating that back into the game, that's an elevation of 180 um, versus zero at the black. So we've got pretty good amount of elevation change within that ocean. But what that also tells me is that I could set my ocean layer at 200 and all of this would still be below the level of the ocean which might be good you know if we started added some things back up into here if you wanted to add a little bit of white which would be like below uh, the the ocean layer below that 200 level or whatever we set it at then that might make it cheaper to make bridges across things like that so 
Uh, there you go. I think we are going to leave it here for right now on this first tutorial episode. And in the second one, we're going to uh, refine the shoreline a little bit. We're going to start adding some values into uh, the shoreline and then going into our ground layers and mountain layers. And uh, there you go. So thank you all very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next tutorial. Uh, leave a subscribe, leave a like, come back, check out the next one. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.